Hello fellow cruisers, Jeff here. Thank you for watching. I'm afraid that today I bring you both tragic and disturbing news from the world of cruising. Three people have gone overboard in two days on three different cruise lines. These incidents include both passengers and crew members, and the details are limited, so we don't know if these cases were intentional or accidental. The most recent happened on August 9th on board the Carnival Dream at about 2.30 in the morning as the ship was on its way to Galveston from Cozumel. All we know at this point is that it was a female crew member and despite a search, she was not found and has been declared missing at sea. Also on August 9th, a passenger on Royal Caribbean's Explorer of the Seas fell into the Adriatic Sea near Croatia. The ship turned around and proceeded with search and rescue operations, but as of last report, the missing passenger has not been found. And on August 8th, a guest went overboard on the Norwegian Spirit while the ship was headed toward the port of Keelung, Taiwan. Lifeboats were launched and the Coast Guard was contacted. The man was found, but I'm afraid he didn't make it. Of course, our condolences do go out to the family and friends of these people, as well as to the staff and crew who are also affected by these incidents. Every year, there are about 20 to 30 man overboard incidents in the cruise industry, and when you consider the millions of people who cruise, you'll see that it is a rare occurrence, but still tragic nonetheless. Disturbing news coming from Amsterdam. Seven protesters from a group called Extinction Rebellion blocked critical locks and caused Royal Caribbean International's Jewel of the Seas to reroute and change her embarkation point. This happened this past Saturday, August 10th. The ship had planned on debarking one sailing and starting another from Amsterdam, but due to the protesters, they had to switch to another port about 20 miles away. Royal Caribbean arranged for free shuttle buses to transport all of the embarking and disembarking guests. The drive between the two terminals is about 40 minutes. The activists reportedly chained and glued themselves to the locks so that the ship couldn't pass through. They were protesting against the perceived environmental impact of the Jewel of the Seas. Of course, it is ironic that the result of the protest was that a small army of buses had to be deployed to transport thousands of passengers to and from the cruise ship. Local police did not remove the protesters because they weren't causing any injuries or life-threatening circumstances. After doing this for a few hours, the protesters unchained and unglued themselves and left. You'll remember that something similar happened just last month when the Seven Seas Voyager wasn't able to dock in France because of protesters blocking the way. Anti-tourism rallies in Barcelona and other cities have seen tourists being denied access to beaches and squirted with squirt guns in outdoor restaurants. So here's my question. Is this the new normal? Have protesters found a way to disrupt the cruise industry? And if so, will they be doing it more often? What do you think? Put your thoughts in the comments section. Before I get to the final two stories, I'd like to ask you to please click that like button to help get this little video recommended to others. And then if you're in a click happy mood, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there too. We're fast approaching 4,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you as one of them. The Carnival Vista is having mechanical problems, and that means that thousands of passengers are getting a very different cruise than what they signed up for. On Saturday, many of the guests were already on board when they got a text telling them that due to mechanical issues, they wouldn't be going on the Southern Caribbean cruise they were planning on. They were supposed to leave Port Canaveral and visit Aruba, Caraco, and Grand Turk, but the ship was experiencing an issue that made it impossible to attain the cruising speed needed to visit those ports. So instead, the itinerary was changed to a trip to the Bahamas, including Nassau, Princess Keys, Freeport, and Half Moon Key. By visiting the Bahamas, the Carnival Vista can chug along at a slower speed that will allow engineers to work on the propulsion system while the ship is still moving. So let's talk about compensation. 
If passengers stay on the ship with the new itinerary, they'll get a $400 onboard credit per stateroom. However, if they prefer not to sail, they'll get a 100% future cruise credit of their cruise fare, along with a full refund for pre-purchased items like drink packages, prepaid gratuities, and internet packages. And of course, everyone will get a full refund of any prepaid shore excursions booked through Carnival Cruise Line. Now, how would you feel if you got on your cruise expecting to go one place and then being told at the last minute that you're going somewhere else? Do you think that $400 onboard credit per cabin is fair compensation? I'm anxious to hear what you think. Finally, we were warned months ago that this could be an active hurricane season and a new storm that's brewing is already causing some cruise lines to change their itineraries. The world's largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas, was supposed to be doing a Southern Caribbean tour visiting St. Kitts and St. Thomas, but they're now moving to the Western Caribbean visiting Roatan, Honduras, Cozumel, and Costa Maya. They will still be visiting Coco Key, which was also on the original itinerary. The Norwegian Breakaway is also changing her itinerary from the Eastern to Western Caribbean. Now, as of this recording, a storm hasn't formed yet, but the National Hurricane Center says that conditions lend themselves to a high likelihood that a tropical depression will form in the next few days in that area. They give it a 70% chance of developing in the next 48 hours and a 90% chance over the next seven days. If they're right, you can count on seeing a lot of other cruise lines making some changes too. So if you have an Eastern or Southern Caribbean cruise planned for this week, be prepared to make some changes. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I certainly appreciate it. I'm Jeff. I hope to see you on a future cruise.